Well, here we are. A little bit late, but we're here anyhow. Sorry for the mix-up. <clears throat> Just gonna try using Google Meet, but um, it's a little bit more challenging than I thought it was gonna be. <clears throat> Give everybody a second to come on in. <laughs> oh well, sometimes you try stuff and it just doesn't work. We'll try again next time. <clears throat> Let's see here. Hopefully, um, I don't know if John... If John saw my post, I just got off the phone with him, so maybe he'll he'll hop back on. <clears throat> but uh, maybe Wesley, could you send him a text message, maybe, and let him know that uh, we decided to we decided to leave the Google Meet idea and just revert back to what we've been using. And, uh, and then we'll try again next time. <clears throat> As it turns out, Aubrey ended up finding out that um, I'm not going to be able to record uh, the Google Meet, at least not on the free platform. So, and honestly, right now, guys, uh, I really don't want another subscription. At least not yet. <clears throat> so, but I'm sure it'll happen soon. <laughs> Especially as this thing grows. Just give it a few more, a few more minutes, I guess. See if uh, see if anyone else wants to hop on here in a minute. Just hopping on, say hello so I can see you guys or know that you're there or know who's there. Thank you, Wesley. grab another another Bible hang on guys be right back Uh, 
Ah, there we go. Hey, Ray. Again, you know, sorry for the mix-up, guys. Um, <clears throat> I was going to try a different platform. It didn't work out. But, hey, here we are. I know this, this route works, so... Let's give it a go. All right, so... Uh, still in First Peter, Chapter 3. Uh, well, last time we were, we were still... We are kind of in Chapter... I was still in Chapter 2, and now... Um, oh, wait a minute. Nope. Sorry. Uh, hang on. I am not in chapter three, I don't believe. Oh, yes, I am. <clears throat> yes, I am in chapter three. So, we are in chapter three um, of First Peter. <clears throat> and, uh, in... Tonight is, well, I don't know, let's just say, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna honestly, like, I'm gonna try to not dig my own grave. <laughs> um, uh, I'm honestly a little bit nervous about talking about this subject a little bit. I, I really don't want to put my own, uh, my own foot in my own mouth. Um, I, I'm not interested in... <laughs> uh making a fool of myself uh so honestly i uh i'm kind of uh i'm a little bit intimidated uh to be truthfully truthfully honest and uh <clears throat> specifically because you know i'm going to be talking about verse uh verse seven in chapter three and uh well you know i'm i'm married and so i tread lightly <laughs> she loves me and uh, hopefully um hopefully i i can communicate this uh really well and uh you know i'm i'm always up for not not confusing uh anyone and and hopefully bring clarity uh, and a sound mind <clears throat> but um, anyways um, well let me let me just start by what I usually do is I will basically just read a little bit of scripture to you guys just to get some of the context, uh, the New American Standard Version is the one I'm reading from, in case you were wondering. Um, so here you go. Uh, in the same way, you wives, be, be submissive to your own husbands, so that even if any of them are disobedient to the word, they may be one without a word by the behavior of their wives as they observe your... Um, your chase is it is it chastity chastity uh, and respectful behavior your adornment must not be merely external braiding the hair the wearing the gold jewelry or putting on dresses uh, but let it be the the hidden person of the heart with the imperishable quality of a gentle and quiet spirit which is precious in the sight of god for in this way, in the former times, the holy women also who hoped in God used to adorn themselves, being submissive to their own husbands, just as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord. Uh, and you've, you've become her children if you do what is right without being frightened by any fear. You husbands, in the same way, live with your wives in a, excuse me, live with your wives in an understanding way. <clears throat> as with someone weaker since she's a woman and show her honor as a fellow heir of the grace of life so that your prayers will not be hindered to sum up all of you be harmonious 
sympathetic, brotherly, kind-hearted, and humbled in spirit, not returning evil for evil or insult for insult, but giving a blessing instead. For you, for you were called to the very purpose that you might inherit a blessing. <clears throat> I'll stop there. Um, I think I think that's a good a good spot to to pause. And so, as you can see, uh, this is why I'm a little nervous about speaking uh, tonight. Um, not that you know, I I know like I know you guys are uh, in incredible loving. <laughs> A group of people with a lot of understanding, a lot of patience. But, uh, you know, nonetheless, I like, I really want, uh, I want to do its justice here. Um, especially in light of like today's culture, you know, there's been so much, uh, you know, a lot of like dehuman, uh, humanizing, dehumanizing. Uh, ideas and uh, you know the the you know, what what is a male and what is a female like it it's such a bizarre time we live in you know the this whole they them thoughts you know and, and ideas is just bizarre for me uh, it's just not I never thought that that uh, you know the that a generation would struggle with the identity that or that kind of identity uh, at least not in the not in the in the way that we're seeing it now you know uh, but anyways um <clears throat> the uh um as I was saying, like I want to focus on on a specific verse in that passage that I read, uh, and so specifically I want to focus on uh, verse seven. And, and yeah, so yeah, the the Mirror Bible <laughs> uh, does not have yet um, does not has not translated that portion of chapter three yet. He's still working on it. Uh, so, so I don't, uh, yeah, I didn't have the mirror Bible to, you know, to fall back on, on this one. Um, however, I will say that, you know, um, it still is a tremendous help because it helps to bring context to who Christ is, uh, and also, you know, who Peter is. And, and I think that just with that alone um uh, i think i have something that maybe i could shed a little bit of light on uh and and not you know not dig my own grave so to speak i guess um, so one of the one of the context for, um, you know, for Peter, right? Um, it's, so some scholars are, they, they've said that, or they've determined that First Peter was wrote or written um, around 62, 64 AD. Um, and most scholars agree that, um, that the letter was written to the Jews that um, basically, it, you know, it scattered. Which to me, it tells me that um, a lot of the language, you know, he's 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 addressing he's addressing his his culture. Um, and and to get a little bit more specific um, about verse seven. I I really want to talk about the word weaker. I I have to be honest. Um, I've I struggled with that word um, quite a bit. I wrestled with it quite a bit. Uh, briefly, 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 briefly talked a little bit 
uh, about it, if I could even say a little bit with Malcolm. Uh, I even talked a little bit about it with Andrew. And uh, I think they're both praying for me right now. <laughs> Marshall even said, oh, if I were you, I'd be careful with that one. You better, you better do a good little word, uh, word study on that on that word <laughs> and so yeah I definitely I definitely spent some time uh, really just trying to meditate and what what this all means you know uh, but as I was saying like it, it really uh, that word just it just doesn't sit right with me um, I mean every single one of us has a mother right um, I can tell you, like, I can tell you that when, when I was growing up, um, I was, I was brought up by a single parent, um, uh, most of my, uh, young, young life, uh, from about the age of, I'm gonna, I'm pretty certain, from about the age five all the way up until um, about the age of, I'm gonna say 13, 14 years old. It was, it was just my mother and I. And this mother of mine, I must say, was not weak at all. Uh, this woman, worked long hours to put a meal on the table she worked long hours to uh, keep a roof over my head <clears throat> she for goodness sakes like she she did what she had to do to to get me out of a dangerous uh, situation within my own home that I thought was supposed to be safe and she did what was the hardest thing to do which would have been to leave uh, her own home and flee on a plane to get away from a, a very abusive relationship but and none of that none of that is weak mm -hmm. I mean absolutely zero of anything I just said is weak. And I'm sure that, you know, if, if, I've, if I've talked to you guys about it, um, you would more than likely have a very similar story of your mother and how strong and not weak she is. So you see, that's my, that's my issue. That's my issue with the word weak. So uh, I think it was uh, it's G seven hundred seventy two is the Greek word that's in there. Um, I had a big issue with it, guys. It just doesn't sit right. My mother is not a weak person. <clears throat> My mother in law would be another example of not a weak woman. Uh, she went through. She went through a lot with uh, with twins and um, and their younger uh, sibling that that uh, she had to care for that fought through cancer and she had to do all sorts of crazy things. I mean, the amount of debt that they accumulated for for the sake of one. I mean, that's that's not that's not weak. I know that is weak. So to say that a woman is weak, um, yeah, you see the issue, right? I hope to the to the three that are on there. You see my dilemma. <clears throat> my wife. I mean, there's there's. 
they're just... I mean, if you tried to convince me that she was weak, I, I could... I could give you ten times the reason why she isn't. Uh, so much that she does for her family, a lot that she does for work and the stress that she handles. and um, Man, it's just... Uh, it just doesn't... It's just not right. I can't call her weak. How could I? Um... I mean, she's like, she's one of the hardest working people I know, you know, and self-giving and, and so on. And to push this even a little bit further along, um, you know, Peter, Peter was a firsthand eyewitness to Jesus in witnessing how Jesus honored the women in his ministry, including his mother. So my, my, my wrestling with this word had to, it, it had to bring in, it had to fit within the context of who Christ is and also who Peter is. This this is what this is what was bothering me so much because it, it just didn't fit into this weird so called weakness. So when I say I, I struggled with it, I, I, you know, I'm doing, I'm doing basically what I've done from the beginning of the study uh, a little over a year ago now. And it's to give myself a little bit of room to, you know, to play and to play with scripture in, in a childlike manner. So, yeah. And so that's what I did. So, and you know what? And to, and to talk about Mary, let's talk about Mary a little bit. Um, her story, um, you know, as, as you read it, she, you know, the, the angel Gabriel appears to her and Gabriel says, you know, don't be afraid. And <clears throat> ultimately, you know, there's some very important words shared there, right? And but what I want to get at is her response. Which was essentially, you know, do, do unto me, you know, what is right. Or as you see fit. Uh, I'm paraphrasing. And, and I think, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I mean, she had to, I think she was around 13, 14 years old. And she, and she has the, the valor to say what she said. That is not weakness at all. That's not weakness, you guys. So you see what I mean? Like this. And there are more stories of uh, women in the Bible with, uh, with incredible um, faith and with incredible strength and <clears throat> endurance. I mean, for goodness sakes, like, if, <laughs> uh, women give birth to, like, little seven to, like, ten pound humans.
And uh, there's nothing weak about that. So, so the, the mother of Jesus says yes, right? And, okay, that's not weak. And here I'm reading uh, in, in the same way, you know, uh, as with someone weaker. It's a big problem, big problem for me. So then, not only does she say yes, but then um, now she's got to convince Joseph. So one, the angel that she had to confront, that she confronted and said yes to. Then Joseph, whom she would have to tell eventually. And... Uh, of course, then she would have to explain herself to her family. Uh, not just her family, but also Joseph's family. Um, then, uh, you know, after all of that, you know, the, the having to escape to go to Egypt, uh, I, I think on a donkey, right? If I'm not mistaken, is it was it a donkey or a whole, you know? I think so. <clears throat> a crazy king, eventually that sh they had to face, you know, and trust God. There is nothing weak about trusting God. There's nothing weak about it. You know, then they had to take the trip back, you know, from out of Egypt. Um, I mean, I couldn't even like fathom having to go through all of that. I, honestly, like I can't even think about, I couldn't even fathom having to go through what my mom went through or what my, what my mother-in-law had to go through. Honestly, like, to have to go through that? So, do you know, do you know what does fit here? I'll, I'll just go ahead, I'll go ahead and just say it. Because I, I want you to hang on to this word as, as I continue on. Um... But what actually truly fits here, rather than weaker, and what gives me some rest um, and understanding, it gives me rest and understanding because of knowing who Christ is and who Peter is, is tenderness. Now let that sink in for a little bit. Tenderness. Wouldn't you agree that that the tenderness of what women show is indeed the strength of the Lord? I mean, really. Her ability to surrender surrender all for the good of another. My mother's ability to, to do what she must for the good of her little boy. Tenderness. And you see now tenderness. That makes, that makes perfect sense to me. <clears throat> I 
I mean, when you see the, the, the tenderness of a mother or, or the tenderness of a, of a wife towards a husband, it is nothing short of a sacramental expression of God's love towards humanity. Sacramentally, sacramentally, an, an expression, an expression. Okay, not literal, but expression. Was it, was it Mary's tenderness? Was it, was it the Virgin Mary's tenderness that gave her the strength to say, be it done unto me as you see fit? It's a big difference from weak or weaker. I hope. <laughs> Well, I'm still alive, so I think I'm doing okay over here, guys. My wife hasn't uh, isn't giving me any crazy looks or anything like that. I think she's rooting me on. I think. <clears throat> is it is it like a? Uh, it's like a, a wonderful ex example. How about that? It's a wonder. We talked about example last Thursday. It's a wonderful example of display, displaying her weakness when she said that. Be it done unto me as you see fit. I'm paraphrasing. Could it be that that in her displaying her tenderness, the weakness, as some, uh, as these translations have it, which, honest, okay, I'll just go, I'll just go on and say it, man. I, I haven't come across a a decent translation yet of that verse, and it's frustrating. It makes me sick. A little. In her display of this tenderness, right? It's it's a display of her tenderness because she she gives way to the Lord quickly. And her strength as well, because although she had every right to be afraid when Gabriel's giving her letting her know what's going to happen. She gives way to the Lord. She faces her fear. The, uh, the tender, loving kindness of the Lord. Actively and sacramentally being expressed through mostly women. Let's be honest. It seems like to me, at least in my experience, and I don't know, maybe you have a different experience. And that's okay too. But I can tell you that in my life, it's usually the women in my life that have been able to express tenderness and kindness better than most or any male figure in my life. Not to say that there isn't or that there hasn't been. I'm just saying that the majority, you know, looking at it like it just the 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 grand scheme of things, right? The looking at the the scale of the whole thing of what I of what's happened in my life, 
overall, I can say confidently that, that, that the women in my life tend to be able to, to display that far better and more effectively than men. There you go. There you go. I said it. Please don't crucify me. So it's her tenderness or her weakness, as this translation puts it, is her strength. And any man that is foolish enough to not confess her equalness to him is a fool. I mean that, really, is an absolute fool. And it's important though, like don't confuse that at what I'm trying to, I'm not saying that a woman is a man or a man is a woman, I'm, I'm saying that they're gloriously different. Okay, there's no confusion here, please. Also, I mean, isn't it interesting too that God's power is shown most during our most vulnerable moments, weaker moments tender moments Paul uses it a lot I I I really almost didn't share this you guys I really almost did not share this idea of tenderness instead of weakness because I, I literally I had to dig a ton to find this I at one point I even thought about hey listen guys this is like strictly just my opinion and uh, I you know like take it or leave it it's you know no big deal you know I, and, and furthermore, as I was saying, like, I, I almost didn't, I, I just almost didn't even want to go down this route. Um, just because of how, how difficult it was to find this out. <clears throat> it's frustrating. I, I'm glad that I did now. I really am. I'm glad. Um... Let me let me give you an example. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, 27 through 31. I'll, I'll read it to you. Here's what it says. An example of tenderness or weaker or weakness. But God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low to despise and despised in the world, even things that are not, to bring to, to bring to nothing things that are, so that no human being might boast in the presence of God. He is the source of your life in Christ Jesus, whom God made our wisdom, our righteousness, and sanctification and redemption. Therefore, as it is written, let him who boast, boast of the Lord.
Huh. How about an, here's another one. And there's lots, there's, there's many more. Um, 1 Corinthians chapter 4, 10. Says, uh, we are fools for Christ's sake, but you are wise in Christ. We are weak, but you are strong. You are held in honor, but we in disrepute. Hmm. That was, uh, if I remember correctly, this is about how um, he's talking about the apostles and how they're they've been made fools for Christ's sake here's another one in Romans Romans 5 verse 6 is that while we while we were still weak at the right time Christ died for the ungodly huh You know what it sounds like to me is that the weakness is the weakness is the only ticket. <laughs> it's the only ticket available to digress uh, in a way of giving way to the Lord. Hmm. In, in Luke 19, there's a parable there, and I'll let you read it. Um, maybe we'll talk about that parable a little later uh, down, down the year. But for, for the context of what, what I'm talking about now is that what, what you need to know is that Christ became the ultimate tenderness of God. He, he did ultimately what no human being could have done on our behalf. He could, he could hear the, the, the tender heartbeat of the Father like no one, like no one else. See, Christ, <clears throat> Christ is the only true noble man who goes into the far country to receive a kingdom and then to return. As, as I'm saying, he is the ultimate tenderness. He is the ultimate weaker vessel of God who sets his face like flint to the cross toward the cross and bleeds bleeds uh, sweat bloody sweat he sets his face like flint the night before right? honestly from the day that he's born He's already, from the moment he is birthed, or in the womb even, you could say, possibly. That he had already set his face like flint to what he needs to accomplish, to go to the far country and to receive a, his kingdom and to return. See, Christ becomes, Christ becomes the most vulnerable person. And in doing so, he single-handedly saves the entire cosmos. Think about it. He is the ultimate servant. 
He is the underwriter of our hearts. As I said last week, he relinquishes his riches, right? He relinquishes his riches and becomes poor for our sake so that we might inherit his riches. And it's through him that we have the relationship with the Father. Tenderness, guys, tenderness. There is a word in Hebrew, uh, um, it's spelled R-A-H-K, I think. And it was when I found that word that gave me the, the substance that I was looking for in delivering this message to you guys. And it is one of the Greek words, uh, this Greek word 772, that is one of, um, that, that can be used, uh, or that can be, yeah, that can be used to translate that Greek into tenderness, or it, it, can, it can work both ways. <clears throat> So, I guess at the risk of earning a, earning a yet another slap on the wrist for taking maybe a verse out of context for you, is I'll finish with this. He says, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. In the name of the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, may the tenderness of God rest on your heart. May it be so evident throughout the rest of your week, from beyond the Sunday that's coming, and well into the next week. May you move with compassion, the compassion of the Lord. May you move in the obedience, the obedience of the Lord. May you see the fruit of his tenderness in your life acted out today as you in Christ and Christ in you in his glorious and wonderful name. Amen.